So the keys to any person's story when they kind of come to Islam or make a major shift is understanding where they came from and where, what it means to them. So for me, I mean, uh, I had a fairly religious upbringing. Uh, my parents, or at least my mother, especially was, uh, insistent upon going to church and I took Christianity, which was my religion very seriously, uh, up until the time when I was a teenager. Um, however, when I became a teenager, as many youth in the world, and especially in the West kind of experience, that's when they start to kind of drift away for various reasons. Sometimes it's hypocrisy, right? That they see among different people that go to the, the church or the, the masjid or whatever. Sometimes it's the inability for people to address real topics and relevant topics, things are actually going on. Um, and, uh, there's sort of like a cocktail of different uh, causes and push and pull factors, but for various reasons, I started drifting away from Christianity and religion when I was a teenager. So I, I understood myself as an atheist when I was, I think 16 years old. And, uh, I had no idea anything about Islam at all. It wasn't really until I got to college and I started my university studies that I kind of became aware of Islam and, um, became attracted to it in a, in a kind of interesting way. So, you know, I had some sort of things that I was studying that destabilized what I thought I knew. Uh, and then I had some influences, a professor and some friends that kind of introduced me to Islam in, um, a very, very simple and straightforward way. And what I kind of, I guess the two big realizations that if I'm going to be very brief, that kind of brought me into the faith. One was that, uh, a lot of what we take as you know, let's say liberal values or the values that kind of dominate the world right now, you know, freedom and democracy and, uh, you know, the right to choose this or capitalism and these sorts of things. Um, it's being pushed on people in another wave of imperialist domination. <laughs> to put it, uh, briefly, right. Um, and obviously that's, you know, years of coursework and books and study, you know, that we can, un that can take a lot of unpacking, but that was kind of my conclusion, right? It's like the colonial wave, the directionality of exchange from West to East, if you will, it was largely imposed and it just kind of changed flavors. You started with the flavor of Christian conversion. Then it came the flavor of, um, you know, formal colonization. And now we have human rights discourse and supposedly different sort of quote unquote universal values that are kind of being imposed. So I believed in those values right up until this time. And then once I started to realize how these things are actually being forced on other people, and many of those people are Muslim, uh, that I started to realize, well, wait a second, actually these aren't universally held values. There's actually a, a larger conversation that has to happen here between these two things. And maybe, um, I need to rethink them myself. Maybe my commitment to these sorts of values shouldn't be so sure. So that was the kind of the destabilization factor. And then when I became exposed to Islam itself, little tiny, tiny things, um, I was immediately struck by two things about Islam. One was how comprehensive it was, meaning that it covered every single sphere of human activity. Um, and the second was how specific it was. Right. So, um, usually if you find a person who talks about everything, they have to talk in generalities, right? They have to be vague in order to kind of not be caught in, in a lie. Um, and normally the opposite is true. So if you find somebody who is going super, super, super deep into one particular, uh, aspect of life or activity or one sort of field or department, then they usually don't know a whole lot about a lot of other things. They're usually narrow and deep. And I experienced Islam as, as both as something that was very, very broad. It covered not just personal development and worship and interpersonal relations, but it covered economy and political theory and war and, you know, society and these sorts of things. And then the things that it had to say about these different spheres of human life and human activity were very, very specific. It wasn't just generalities. Like for example, if you want to look for a comparison between, um, in the Christian tradition, the quote unquote liberation theology that some traditions of Christianity or, or Christians have kind of, um, developed, it's really, really kind of extrapolating things from the Christian tradition. It's not a whole lot of specific things that they're taking from the Bible and able to say, well, God said this and God said this, and we don't do this and we have to do that. 
it's really a lot of human um, interpretation. Um, and obviously, interpretation is always there. But when it comes to Islam, no, it, it, Allah said, do this. No, don't consume riba. No, stay away from zina. No, uh, you have to do this. And this is the rules of, uh, of inheritance. And these are the rules of war. And this is when it's okay to do this and when it's not okay to do that. Very, very, very specific. So that kind of shocked me in a pleasant way. It was kind of something that I think I had been subconsciously looking for for a long time. And then it was just, that was just the beginning, you know? So after, once you catch the bug, right? Then you want to study, you want to know, then it's just a fire, a fire that can't be put out. And you just want to keep learning, keep learning, keep learning. And I had my own obstacles and my own sort of assumptions, but the wonderful thing about Islam is that I was encouraged to ask questions. And every single time that I actually um, dove deep and researched and tried to find uh, an answer, I eventually found it. Uh, and a satisfying one. So that was enough for me. Um, in addition, and this was probably relevant to, you know, the, the purpose of this channel, the, I always, even when I was a young person, had a sense that religion had to be more. I, I wasn't ever satisfied with the idea that all God wanted from me was to show up to church on Sunday, sing a few songs, listen to a, a, a little 20 minute speech and then go home. And that's it. Like I, even as a young person, I was attracted to the monks. I was attracted to the ascetics. I was attracted to people who you had to work, right? You had to develop yourself. It, it made sense. If, if, if there really is a God and I'm really indebted to him and I really, my life's journey is about expressing my gratitude and submitting to him, I should have to work for it. So when I came to understand that Islam five times a day, I have to pray and 30 days a year, I have to fast and Hajj once in a lifetime, if you're able to, and Zakat and Mount, all these sorts of things. Like, I felt this is an actual religion. This is something that makes sense. This is actually a program that's going to develop myself in a way that just showing up and singing once a week is not going to do. So that's basically what, what brought me in.